Hello, welcome to my channel. This is Grant or simply Nick, and we're gonna be making antennas and stuff or something like that. Come on in, sit down, and take a sweat. I think you're really cool. I like you a lot. Maybe we can hang out or something. Hey, I think you're really cool. I like you a lot. Maybe we can hang out or something. Okay, let me give you the lay of the land. Fan, noisy. I believe this is a Wilson antenna radio, antenna tip. I bought two of them. And focus you bastard, there you go. What I intend to do is, let me see if you can see it, if I stand it up over here. Okay, now there's the base. What this is, obviously, is an old Shakespeare. antenna mask for a boat and when I got it at a thrift sale a yard sale I think I paid 10 bucks for it it uh, the center element had been ripped out of it so I didn't know why I bought it but I bought it okay so the original idea was to run that element hold on sorry about that um, so it kind of looks like a thermal, like a thermostat kind of thing for a water heater, but it's not. It's just a piece of copper tubing that I heated up and then ran a buttload of solder down onto this copper wire, okay? And the tip of that is cut open, okay? So it's wide open at the tip. So my plan originally was to just feed that copper wire up inside there and cap it off with a capacity ha uh, capacity hat up on top and run the wires down, feed it into the top of that, have a grounded or have a connection point for this end and it come all the way out through the end to a feed point and then those copper links used as radials which is all well and good except for it wasn't a set or known length and I have since decided what I'm going to do is you remember the quiver pieces that I had bought for mounting radials on a Yagi I'm gonna to try to cut out that piece right there, okay? Or that piece right there with a hole in it. And cut it the same circumference as the opening there to plug it, to run that radial that I solder into that connection and run up through the pipe connecting the end of that that end of the copper wire, I think that's like 10 gauge, it's, it's rigid. Onto that, connect them, and then that would be a 16 foot CD radio and vertical antenna. And either use these copper wires as radials mounted off the sides here somewhere, or um, actually use some other material for the radiants that are already that look they're a little bit more rigid i'm afraid the copper is going to droop unless it was sitting on the ground which it's not but i want this up in the air so we'll see i haven't completely completely determined how i'm going to do that if i'm going to use those copper 
wires as radials or not, but that is the program. So let me, uh, I'm gonna cut this first, these two pieces first to see if that's even a viable plan. Then break out the old heat gun, the propane torch, melt that a little bit and get it pushed back because uh, it's right to the end. The wire, the copper wire is right to the end. And I'd need to push it back a little ways so I can feed that antenna aerial to it and put a metric buttload of solder in there so it's now electrically one piece. And then we can move on with production. So let me pull you back in when I get this thing cut and sized. Okay. Back to you in the uh, sweatshop garage. Um, what we have here is my custom built desoldering er, 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 er for the propane torch. Pliers to rasp that when heated and to extract it from inside that tube slightly. And, um, I clamped this, I was going to return this, this is a Harbor Freight clamp that I bought for my drill press and it's just too damn big, There's a, it's for the next size up drill press, but I didn't want to return it and because a small anvil that you can clamp or even bolt um, down can be handy at times, you know, it's something with the low, especially if you're not going to pound down or anything like that, it's just more for clamping and keeping something in one spot so anyways so that's the deal with that we're going to try to heat that up i believe where the discoloration there is about where we need to start heating that up and it probably shouldn't take too much slide it out let it cool off and um, then my custom made rod cap I cut that down fitted it and then just almost had to use explosives to get it out of the end of the Shakespeare antenna carcass carcai, that thing um, but it fits really snug so I figured I'd go ahead and just slide it up on the shaft of this of the uh, antenna and get it all put together and then I can slide it all down into the uh, antenna to the point where I want it and then shove that down in the opening. And uh, that part of this operation ought to be obeyed. So let me do this. If I had to, one tripod man, if I had brought a tripod I could have set this up on a tripod so that you could watch me hopping around burning the piss out of myself. Hopefully not going to happen, but me knowing me and flames, I might. Oh, plus pain. That's a perfect spot to be doing this. Um, so anyways, I will cut back in when I get that pipe moved there, the tube, copper tube moved slightly so that I can feed some of this in and solder it all into one electrically sound connection. Okay, I uh, let me check this microphone. Yeah, it's still working. Hey! So while you're standing there waiting for me to speak, what I did is I clamped it in that and then put a crimp right here. It's still hot as hell right now, but there's a crimp right here in that pipe. It's a piece of tubing so that the antenna aerial would only go down that far. And then I heated it up and I kind of crimped it down and then heated it up and 
I of course applied flux to everything before I put this all together, then heated it up and then just melted a buttload of solder into the top of this opening right here. So that, that whole, that's still hot as hell. That whole um, from here to here is probably pretty much full of solder. And it's still connected down there. I'm gonna heat that up just to make sure that the uh, connection is still solid there inside that tube after yanking it out. And uh, then I'll spray it all down with the water hose over there, cool it off, and we'll feed it inside the, uh, the shell of the old Shakespeare, Shakespeare UHF. I think it was a UHF. What's Marine? UHF or UHF? I ain't UHF. Anyway, it's a Marine antenna, probably the last shell. And um, we'll move onward and upwards. Yo. So, after heating it up and making sure that there was solder in there, I stood it up to bring it over to hose it off. And I would say that there was not just a lot of solder up in there. It was a metric buttload of solder. So it is a, it is a joined copper to stainless steel. One piece aerial now, just 12 feet long ish. Um, yeah, it's been cooled down. There's the plug. I'll go get the, uh, the shell, the carrier, if you will, for it. And we'll feed it in there and see what's happening. Doing it, doing it, doing it. But yeah, I'll be sweeping up all that stuff because should go have a fit over that. Maybe. Before I started reassembling it, I wanted to make sure that there was plenty of solder, that that connection was as mechanically sound as possible. Um, the last thing in the world is I need to have this thing becoming a problem, which it could become very easily and um, inefficient. The list goes on. So uh, I'm letting it cool naturally. Uh, and then I will assemble it and I will bring you back in. Okay, so I've got it back together, it's plugged. I'm gonna do some caulking and stuff like that, probably some amalgamating tape on the end of it here. Or uh, maybe even, I think there's a poly cap that I could buy and put on there. But the two pieces are joined and I'll probably hit that with the soldering iron just to uh, make sure it's baked in there real good. The uh, double wrap right there was to ensure that it was going to come out of the hole that I made for it and I could get it out of the hole to connect the two halves. And then it runs out there. Now the one thing I haven't decided on is the exact feed point. Do I want to cut off that metal threaded end and cut it up here a ways so that a PL2, the, the console mount PL239 would fit there, epoxy it in place, solder it to the center pin and then have the uh, the four mounting bolts that I could attach radials to. Or I could possibly, since you may not be able to see it, but the copper center wire, well, I'd probably pull that apart and put a uh, poly sleeve on it right there so it wouldn't touch the inside. I, I believe it's lined. That entire thing is lined. I don't know. It, it might be 
exposed metal. But anyways, I was thinking that I could put a, just mount the, put a PL239 up inside there, cut the ears off of it and stuff it inside there with the center pin and uh, then run the copper from the, uh, the, the coax to that. You know, that may be the way I do it. Just pull this off and run a piece of coax in there. Have the center pin connected to that and the shield connected to this chrome. I'd have to knock all that metal off of there, the chrome, the, the uh, chrome, because it's brass underneath, as you can see right there. Um, and then I could just do like a horse collar with the three radials off of that connected to the shield of the, of the coax. Okay, well this, this project is still in the works, but just know, you know what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna stand it up so that you can see what it looks like. And uh, then I'm gonna put it up there on the shelf with that up there until I have some more research done on how I wanna play this. Because I'd really like this to be a uh, CB base station that's uh, resonant on the CB frequencies. So we shall see. Okay, all right. So I left, I'm leaving that hinge point right there in the, uh, so it can be laid down, namely because I was thinking that I could turn it sideways and use those eye openings as a um, for U-bolts to mount it to a mast and get it like 10 more feet off the ground. So then it'd be 26 feet in the air. I don't know if you can see that up there before the sun kills you, but it goes quite a ways up there. And then of course I would be wrapping this with uh, shrink, shrink, uh, tubing to, to cover the connection. Um, and then I just have to figure out about the uh, radials. And uh, also, what if I have to do anything to the length to get it in tune. Um, so, that's that. I will... Uh, cap this one here with the understanding that there's more work that needs to be done um, in case the glare was too much. You think about it, you can loosen that handle, the T-handle, and rotate the mounting base nine, uh, 90 degrees and then it can be mounted on the side to a uh, mast. And then the radial sticking out, and the counterpoise radials. I, I was even thinking that you know they make enough of, of the it's the telescoping radials that I with threaded ends that I could probably just tap tap into it. I don't know. Um, I'm not fully convinced that it you know exactly what it needs, but for this part of the evolution, we're at least here. It's connected, it's soldered, and so there we go. Okay, I'm going to cut back in here. That's up there to be finished another day. Uh, once I determine how, I'm going to feed it and do some more research on counterpoise or brown plane. But I wanted to talk about this and why I decided to keep it. Now, I might have alluded to it, uh, maybe even earlier in this video, I'm not even sure, but the biggest thing is that if you're going to use this heavy gauge copper, which I would recommend um, to make J-poles or Slim Jims, 
it's very important that the 90 degree bends are pretty pretty bright on and because your measurements are going to be based off the inside of those 90 degrees and it makes tuning and adjusting very um, when it's done correctly it makes it very um, formula formulaic formulatic whatever uh, just a straight formula you know, you do this, this, and this, and this is this, and this is this. Your X, Y, and Z angles are at 90 degrees, and the links are from here to here. Then the mounting point and the resonant frequency should be a preset deal, okay? The only difference would be the, you know, copper versus, you know, some of the metal heads are using steel. Um, but the velocity factor for copper, you know, is a little different. So, but I don't believe with a, like a 220, a 440, or even a two meter Slim Jim that you would have to worry about that too much with the feed point. Uh, it's just connecting the ground to the proper side of the J-pole where the Slim Jim is the, uh, the big deal. So that makes bending that thick, heavy eight gauge, or I think that's, that didn't mean be six gauge wire um, into the shape that you need so that you can make a functional uh, Slim Jim and still get it inside a three quarter inch piece of PVC to protect it. Um, so that's why I kept that. Um, I don't know that I'm gonna be churning out mass amounts of uh, Slim Jims or J-poles out of that kind of copper, but you know, you have the tool, the money's gone, buy once, cry once. Um, and then just you know add it to the inventory so that is the reason for that so if you made it to the end of this video i apologize i definitely was intending to finish the uh, project all the way out but number one it's about 107 degrees inside the uh, garage right now and that just makes for the the, the desire to get done and get out. I'm going to turn this thing around so I can talk to you. So what I was saying is, is that it's being as hot as it is in the garage right now. Um, I turned the fan off, cleaned up everything. Um, the, the urge to cut corners to go a little faster is strong and I don't want to be in that position where I would even consider that on one of these. So I opted to put it on the shelf to finish another day and hopefully you know I won't lose both my subscribers because I didn't finish project 100% but you've got the you've got the backbone you've got the uh, the bare bones of the of the process um, the biggest thing is is having something rigid that you can run a solid copper wire and and have it not having to be guyed or suspended from a tree or whatever. So uh, I think it's an excellent plan, having a useless shell of a marine radio mast as the uh, primary supporter for copper uh, wire. Hey, why not, let's do it. So thank you for watching and I hope that you, uh, you know, enjoyed it or at least the part of it that we got finished. And as I come to more final resolution on exactly how we're going to do this, I will uh, call it part two or whatever I call this video. Thanks for watching. Um, you have a great day. Uh, thanks for helping me. It looks like I've gained a couple subscribers. So obviously some of you have gotten no sense of taste. Uh, I do appreciate it. Okay. Um, I've got two, I looked the other day, I've got 224 videos. Wow. I've got more videos than I have subscribers. That's sad. So anyways, um, thanks to you that have subscribed. Uh, thanks to you that uh, have messaged me privately. Um, I do appreciate your vote of support. 
and even those that have had negative comments, you know, hey, you know, if you don't like my stuff, hit di dislike twice, not a problem. And if you consider subscribing and liking and sharing, that would be kind of cool too. You guys have a great day. Bye.